Here we are with Nick Dimici, who is the vampire stalker, the killer in Stakeland, uh, a sort of post-apocalyptic uh, vampire movie that some people have said is like the road with fangs. How do you see this, Nick? The road with fangs is not a bad comparison. Uh, but when you were making it, were you thinking that? There's something almost medieval about it as well. No, we were not trying to remake The Road in any way. The Road actually, you know, we had already written the script before we even knew The Road was coming. Uh, so this was done a few years back, because The Road yeah, came was, out like two years ago, yeah, right? Yeah, the script was written before all that happened. Uh, basically, our idea and, you know, what we just basically said, what would happen if, if uh, society fell, and uh, we realized it would be a journey going back through time, so kind of start out at the beginning of that and you go to the civil rights era and from the civil rights era to the depression so we used a lot of the grapes of wrath kind of as a you know a setting point for costumes and, and stuff like that and then eventually by the end of the movie we're back in the west almost you know where I think we would end up being a pioneer nation again so it is uh, it is each stage sort of like of a journey each chapter would be one it's step retreated in time, time uh, right. away from quote high civiliz civilization. Mm -hmm. exactly. You drive around yeah. in a convertible. It looks like a classic American car. Is it an Oldsmobile? It's a 1969, I think, GTO convertible. A cl one of the classic movies from mm -hmm. car movies as well, the yes. G Pontiac GTO. It's a great car. So you wrote this with, with uh, Jim Micklin, right? Mickle. Mickle, who is also the director. Yes. So are you partners in a production company? Are you old friends? How did this work together? We've been working together and friends together for 10 years or so uh, we've done this our second film together as far as uh, feature length films uh, worked on a couple short films with Jim and uh, we have never outright formed any kind of partnership we've never had a contract between us uh, but we work together and that's you know. what was your first film that you did uh, Mulberry Street which came out I think in 207 uh, for Lionsgate, it was part of the After Dark thing in 2007. Uh, and the first film I did with him was uh, it was actually a college thesis film for another guy he was helping, and that's where I met him, uh, called Mickey Lee. And then I worked on his thesis film, it was called The Underdogs. And where was this for college? Uh, they were The movies were shot in Pennsylvania. One was in Connecticut, the other one was in Pennsylvania, but it was for uh, NYU. And for NYU? Yeah. And did you grow up around New York City? I grew up... Uh, Partially 44th Street and 10th Avenue. My father was a bartender and we moved out to Jersey probably when I was around 10. But I kept coming back because my father was a bartender in New York. So in the summer I go to work with him and I worked the kitchen, me and my brother. So. And when did you decide acting was going to be the life? Acting and writing, I guess. Uh, probably during those summers at the bar with my father when we'd close up and stay over and pull the cot out. and He'd put the TV on and we'd watch a late, late show. He'd tell me all who the actors were. And I just got, I fell in love with movies and acting, you know, watching old movies, basically. Humphrey Bogart, Jimmy Cagney, all those guys, J. And, Carol Nash. And did you study uh, officially as I an studied, actor? Were you a drama major? No, I never went to college. Uh, I did study with uh, Bill Hickey for a while. Uh, Who's very well known and also for uh, a movie uh, that he made oh, with yeah. uh, John Houston. Wasn't he in the one with Angelica Houston? And, uh, yeah, Pritzi's Honor. Pritzi's Honor, yeah. yeah, yeah. I studied with him for a while, Michael Moriarty for a while. Uh, you know, and basically, I've been a member of the actor's studio for I don't know how many years now. But. So you believe in the method, so to speak? I don't know. Strasbourg? Every, no? Every method is different. Okay. So, I what, in, you know, bits and pieces of things. Whatever works for you, you take from what you do. I don't think there's any one method to acting. I mean, I kind of like Walter Matthau one time in an interview, they asked him about, you know, what about method? Walter said, my method? I learned my lines and I'm going to say them like I mean them. <laughs> uh, I, can't, I can't argue with him. Well, well, you're very ferocious and fearsome uh, as you run around. I mean, the, the vampires in this movie, in fact, uh, you refer to them as vamps. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like roadkill, mm -hmm. uh, spewing not red blood but black bile, yeah. and they're really like grotesque things from a, a childhood horror uh, fantasy or something. You know, the the boogeyman almost. They're mm -hmm. not like what we see on uh, 
um, television with First Blood or the Vampire Hunters. They're not glamorous figures that uh, have some kind of uh, connection between sex and death. They're really just monsters. So can you talk a little bit about you know, how you wanted State Clan to stake a different territory in this current... Yeah, I mean, um, it's yeah. kind, of, kind of a throwback. I mean, part of the vampire lure, if you, if you go into vampires, I mean, they weren't romanticized until Bram Stoker came along, really, and maybe Byron kind of touched on that a little bit with his vampire story first. But uh, before that, I mean, there was Stro Strogi. There's all different names from, you know, Nesfatatu. And they were not romantic characters, you know. If you look at the old uh, black and white with Max uh, Stein, I think it was. Oh, God, he's, not, he's no handsome guy. He's pretty scary with that bald head and the pointy ears. And I just thought that was a lot more interesting just because the other one has been done to death. And what we didn't want is a bunch of talking vampires. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, they it, just gurgle. They sure talk and, a lot in movies. You know, yeah. Like, so, well, so you were giving the lines to yourself and you're a mentor to a young boy who narrates the story. Right. Now, there are some screenwriters who say using a narrator to tell your story is a... Uh, um, weak construction, that it's, uh, you know, they add narration onto movies that are confused uh, after they've been shot or something. You obviously planned this. Why did you want that voice coming along to lead the audience into this uh, territory? It allowed us a way to tell the story through Martin's point of view, because it is his story. It's his coming of age story. And... Uh, I mean, as far as the critique of that as a writer, I don't know. I never studied to be a writer. I write. Uh, I know what I like. But if you watch Days of Heaven, I don't know how anybody can can say that was a bad idea to have narration in Days of Heaven. Uh, you With know, little Linda Manns telling oh the story in Terrence Malick's movie. Your heart. Without the narration... There's no movie. I, I, yes. And, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's works that way in our movie, but I, I don't think the narration takes away from the movie, and I think it does add a lot to his character, because he doesn't speak in the movie. He barely has any dialogue. The kid does it. Out. Yeah. You know, which he wouldn't. I mean, what is he going to say? What's he going to talk about? You know what I mean? He's a little kid. He's scared shitless half the time. You know, so what is a good... What did you think... Uh, what were the qualities uh, that a vampire stalker, a heroic one that you play would have to have to be convincing to the audience and to work as a character. Did you make a list? No, no, I mean, uh, I kind of based them, I like to do stuff as real as I can. So, you know, I didn't want to play it out like, you know, with wisecracks and, you know, do this typical hero, you know, kills everything easily, you know, and uh, I mean, he does show fear when he fights. He's not. You know, it's it's very uh, rough. You know, it's not clean stuff, and I think that's far more real. I think that adds to the movie. It adds to the sense of danger. You know, that it's not easy to kill these things, and you know, even this guy who's a, is a badass. He has no problem killing people if you watch a movie. I mean, them, he's not afraid of it at all. But these things, it can get out of hand. And I think by approaching it from that end of it, you kind of de demythicize, if I can say that word. You know, that kind of what we've come to, not to knock him in any way, but the Arnold Schwarzenegger type of hero who always has to have the, you know, the, the punchline after he kills something. I just thought this one was, you know, let's do it like a real Western. It adds to the gravity of the whole situation. You're not making right. jokes here. This is a life gritty. or death matter. It keeps it gritty. Right. You know I, mean? and, uh, I think that kind of worked better than anything for us. He also takes out teeth. A yeah. tooth from each dead vampire yeah, that he kills? Their fangs. Uh, they're yeah. fangs. And so uh, there's one point where somebody says, how many have you gotten? And he takes out his little leather pouch, kind of like a scout in an old western. Mm -hmm. Or uh, yeah. a, an Indian might take out his string of uh, scalps and shows them to the guy. And there's like a dozen of them, a dozen fangs there or something. Where'd you come on with that idea? I mean, it's pretty... <laughs> Pretty standard pioneer behavior, you know. The United States government used to pay people for Indian scalps to sell to Indians, so and it wasn't that long ago when you think about it. Uh, you know, Vietnam, people collected ears, you know, people do strange things in war, and I kind of saw this as a war movie. Plus, we also have the, uh, the connection in it that these are a, a means of commodity in this world, you know, money's worthless. But if you got some fangs, people want those. Whoa, vampire. And you stay true to the